The first time having a child can be downright scary. What do you buy? What's safe? What isn't? And one question parents often struggle with right out of the gate is should you bank cord blood for stem cells? KCTV 5's Amy Anderson checked into a new option for parents called teeth banking. It's just another option out there for parents to mull over. Could someone in your family one day be saved because you bank what most parents simply put under a pillow? You're terrified already. Ashley Cray is expecting baby number four and can sympathize with what first time parents are going through. They say don't use bumpers, but every store sells bumpers. You know, it's like constantly you don't know. And then your mom's going, no, put them on their tummy. That's what I did. And no, put them on their back. And then, so it's always something. For years now, the debate over banking cord blood has raged on and now add another possibility to that list, tooth banking. Websites like toothbank.com and Storetooth tout the potentials, claiming no parent wants their children to get sick or become disease stricken, so take advantage of medical benefits today that can provide cutting edge treatments for tomorrow. And this exploding field of research holds the promise that your child utilizing a toolkit of their own stem cells will live a life of unprecedented wellness. But doctors we talk to say not so fast. There's a lot of things to think about with those, those fragile, potentially life-saving cells, and families have a lot of questions about them. Dr. Natasha Bergert is a pediatrician in Kansas City and a spokesperson for the American Academy of Pediatrics. While she says cord blood is of significant value for her personally, it's still not enough to warrant banking it. She and her husband decided to donate theirs, but understand why some patients want to keep theirs for themselves. There are some parents who really like to be proactive. Um, proactive for the lightning strike is kind of what I say. Like the, the likelihood of you having to use those and being able to successfully use them is probably as rare as a lightning strike. If that brings you peace and you have the means, then of course that's gonna be an option for your family. But as for banking teeth, that's not something she's going to recommend to her patients anytime soon because the science simply isn't there yet. I think an important difference here is that those cells are not the same type of stem cells that are from cord blood. And a lot of the marketing materials that you may see from dental or from teeth harvesting is really kind of misleading. For example, if your child or family member turned up with some sort of blood cancer, which is a common reason to turn to stem cell storage, you won't get any help from banked teeth. Those stem cells that can be extracted from teeth are called mesenchymal, which means they can only be bone, fat, or cartilage. They can't be blood cells. They couldn't be endocrine cells, unlike cord blood stem cells, which would have that potentiality. Not only that, with cord blood, a blood sample is taken from the cord at birth, and that's it. With teeth banking, it takes several teeth that will have to be pulled at just the right time without any guarantee you hit at the right time. You're scheduling extractions to be able to get rid of the little teeth before they fall out of their mouth in order to be able to get the pulp in time and make sure that it's salvageable. So no more tooth fairy, you know, no more biting into an apple and having that unexpected surprise of those baby teeth naturally falling out. It's a very calculated event. And if your kids were nervous about going to the dentist before. You could only expect really increasing anxiety at the dentist yeah. if every time you go is to have a tooth pulled. Oh. And that would cause, I don't, that would be very difficult for me to do to my children to put them, to put them through that. But more than anything, she says, it comes down to science and the fact we simply don't know enough to warrant the cost, usually starting at around $1,000. So if I had to pick, I'm still going to be storing my cord blood rather doing dental banking with what we know today. The other thing to think about with banking anything is honesty. You have no way of knowing whether what you are paying to have stored is where it's supposed to be. In fact, a couple of Dr. Burgert's patients have had banks go out of business, leaving those people scrambling, trying to find something else fast and affordable. Amy Anderson, KCTV 5 News.